the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and raised with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you've built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the Hebrew Scriptures, taken from the Book of Lamentations. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people! How like a widow she has become! She that was great among the nations! She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal! She weeps bitterly in the night, with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judea has gone into exile with suffering 
and hard servitude. She lives now among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate. Her priests groan, her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. Her foes have become the masters, her enemies prosper. Because the Lord has made her suffer for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. From the daughter Zion has departed, all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. Hear the wisdom of the Hebrew scriptures. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 137. By the waters of Babylon we sat down and wept. When we remembered you, O Zion, as for our harps, we hung them up on the trees in the midst of that land. For those who led us away captive, asking us for a song, and our oppressors calling for mirth. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song upon an alien land? If I forgot you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. If I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember the day of Jerusalem, O Lord, against the people of Ebon, who said, Down with it, down with it, even to the ground. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, Happy the one who pays you back for what you have done to us. Happy shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them upon the rock. And together we pray. God of courage and compassion, comfort the exiled and oppressed. Strengthen the faith of your people and bring us all to our true home, the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the Christian writings taken from the second letter to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our, our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know that the one in whom I have put my trust I am sure that he is able to guard until that day when I am entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy, Ghost, the Holy Spirit living in us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has come, just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We've done only what we ought to have done. This is the gospel of the Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Increase our faith, the disciples cry. Increase our faith. To which Jesus replies, No, you don't need more faith. See, Jesus has just told the disciples to do some very hard things. He's just told the disciples that they have a responsibility towards those that Jesus describes as the little ones. And this is not just children, but anyone who is in that vulnerable kind of place in society, those who do not have wealth, and power, and influence. We're talking about those who are, you know, poor, those who are refugees, those who are widows and orphans. We're talking about those, too, who are new to the faith. Anybody who is in that vulnerable kind of situation, and he says to the apostles, you have a special responsibility to look out for them. And not only do you have a special responsibility to look out for them, but you also have a special responsibility to forgive them. Not just once or twice, but over and over and over again. There is 
a commandment in there about the way in which they are to live in relationship with other people. And it is hard. And so when the disciples are saying, increase our faith, I can't help but feel that what they are really saying to Jesus is, make this easier. Take some of that burden off of us. Make it easier for us to do these things that you're asking us to do. And Jesus' response is, you don't need it to be easier. You don't need it to be easy. You need to do the work. You need to live the faith that you already have, not have more faith. You need to live the, the faith that you already have. The faith that you already have is more than enough. You need to live that faith in your lives. You need to live that faith in your relationships. You need to show that faith to others. You don't need more. You just need to use the faith that you have. And that's not an easy thing for them to hear. And in some ways, it's not an easy thing for us to hear. Because this is a command of Jesus that does echo through the centuries. The followers of Jesus Christ, whether they're 2,000 years ago, named James and John and Peter and Andrew, or whether it's a bunch of us here. We too are called to live our faith. And living the faith that we have requires us to be in relationship with people who are marginalized, to be in relationship with people that others might avoid, to advocate to represent, to support, to forgive those people who otherwise might have no one on their side. It is, I think, something that we need to understand in our calling as disciples of Jesus Christ as those people that Jesus Christ has sent into the world, we are in relationship in ways that will challenge us. We are called to be in those situations that are difficult. We are called to live our faith. We are called to show our faith. And we don't need more faith in order to do these things that we're called to do. We just need to live the faith that we already have. Thing is, when we actually live our faith, our faith actually does grow. It actually does get stronger. It actually does increase. So we don't actually need to say to Jesus, increase our faith. We need to say, we are the followers of Jesus Christ. We live the faith that we have been given. And we care for, and we love, 
and we forgive all those who are marginalized, who are vulnerable, who have need. We are the faith that we have been given. We are that presence in the world. We are part of that relationship that God has with God's creation. We have enough faith that we can move mountains or tell a tree to uproot itself and plant itself in the ocean. We just need to live that faith that we have been given already. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God hears our distress and our crying and feels it with us. Knowing that God hears our prayers, let us share our concerns with him for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for all in lay and ordained ministry as they labor for the growth of your kingdom on earth, keeping them strong in the faith. Provide them with the energy and resources they need and inspire them daily with your love. We pray for Todd, our bishop, Anne, our metropolitan, Linda, our primate, Sam, our archdeacon, Raymond, our rector, our wardens, parish council, and all parish ministries. We pray for our brothers and sisters at Canon Davis Memorial, St. Paul's Point Edward, St. John the Baptist, Walpole Island, St. Alban the Martyr, Delhi, St. Peter's, Dorchester, St. John's Eastwood, and for our companion diocese of Amazonia in Brazil. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. We pray for all meetings, conventions, and conferences 
for all policy making and planning, and may delicate negotiations be sensitively led, and painful decisions bravely and wisely taken. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. We pray for those we have upset or angered, and those who have upset or angered us. We pray for those who worry us, and those we love but seldom manage to see. Today in our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Frieda Carter, Sharon, Isabel, Lucas, and Matthias Chapman, Glenn and Helen Cole, and their families. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. We pray for those who are far from home and those for whom it is too dangerous to return home. We pray for the lonely, the unhappy, those in pain, and those convalescing, and those whom we know that have special need to feel your healing touch in their lives, and whose names we speak now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, you are our hope, you are our strength. We remember those who have come to the end of their earthly life and whose lives feel bleak and empty without them. We pray for mercy and comfort and peace. Lord, you are our hope, you are our strength. Thank you, Lord, for being there beside us through all the dark and rocky places in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us praise our Savior taught us. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.